Hello and welcome to part six of Reconstruction, which is the myth of black rule, as well as the development and rise of the KKK. Um, so as we talked about last time, as we kind of uh, debunked with statistics a little bit about um, African American control of um, the political process within the North and the South, which is really minor um, at the time, but a lot of things happened at the height of Reconstruction, during right after African American enchi enfranchisement, the right to vote, um, is that you actually see some of the uh, good records in which the Republicans had at this time. They ended up doing statewide reform of education, so it was more comparable, it was better. It wasn't the same height as the North, but it was better. You also have state money that is raised for infrastructure, such as bridges and levees and uh, railroads and reconstructing the South in many ways. Um, and also you have reform, judicial reform of anti-discrimination laws at this time. They're later repealed, but at the time they're brought forth. Um, uh, but as a consequence, what happens is taxes end up going up, um, and taxes went up to northern levels. Now, they weren't particularly high, but previously the South had not seen the rate of taxes, and this is because of the plantation um, uh, about the plantation economic South. And so with the plantation, they had free labor. Um, with, through slavery, and they also took on the board, burden of taxes because most farms were sus subsistence farmers with one or two. They may have had um, a slave, but the big plantation uh, owners really played the majority share of um, taxes in the South. Well, once that is removed, most of the tax burden falls on the middling people. So it went from the higher, um, many of the plantation owners, remember, are broken. They no longer have plantations. Um, and so it is uh, it is seen as a heavy burden that falls in the middling class of the South. Now, again, it's not a hu uh, like an excessive amount of taxes. It just hadn't been previously how the structure was set up. So a lot of people move from the Republican camp into the Democratic Democratic um, camp, more so of white um, uh, uh, white male voters. And so by 1874, the Democrats end up holding the Congress and Senate. So we're going to talk about how that eventually happens and with regards to um, it's not just about the taxes, it's also about a lot of the, uh, the myths that come about. Now, remember we talked about in la the last lecture about how um, there was more representation of African Americans within different state congresses, um, but not on the go um, governor form and on local elections. And there's more um, African American tr uh, voter turnout that happens. But remember, 80% of African Americans who were Republicans um, had uh, less than 10% of the seats, whereas in the 20% minority of um, voters had the um, the 90% of seats. So it's really important to notice that. But it, just to see the kind of um, the myth that surrounds this, this idea that um, there is black rule that is controlling the South and it's going to change the way of life in this aggressive, um, uh, aggressive form of former slaves are going to take over and punish everyone is this legitimate fear for... Um, not a legitimate fear, but a fear um, by a lot of um, northern um, uh, white men, and, or southern and northern white men. And so an example of this is in 1870s, a, a white newspaper, uh, sorry, a white newspaper man uh, was on the visit to North Carolina, and this is what he says. The speaker is black, the clerk is black, the doorkeepers are black, the little pages are black, and the um, chairman of ways and means is black, the chaplain is black. It is a barbarous, overwhelming civilization by the rude form of the most ignorant dem democracy the world has ever saw." End quote. This idea that this is a lost cause of the old school ideas that uh, and ex-Confederates really take up this um, but. Um, baton and also former plantation owners and other people they they go out and they perceive this myth you're going to watch clips of what is probably the most racist um, video you have ever seen um, and this is the clip of birth of a nation it's from 1915 it's actually the first movie that is ever shown in the white house um under wilson and so in 
the birth of a nation. It shows a Congress that is sitting there lazily of all African Americans not doing anything. And it has a stereotype that they're eating fried chicken. And um, if you watch the entire entire movie, which is very difficult to digest, is you see... um, you see just these rampant stereotypes and at the end of the movie you have the Ku Klux Klan literally riding in with white um, knights kind of mentality to save uh, the women and save the um, the South from African Americans and this mentality that's in 1915 so this is long after the Civil War and long after Reconstruction ends and this this still this idea is permeated that you have um, us versus them mentality. Um, in Gone with the Wind is, is example from the 1930s is there's even a section in which uh, they they show a guy picking up a carpet bag and implying that he's a carpet ba- uh, beggar. They also have some of the main characters are going out on raids with the KKK. Um, and this kind of idea that they're saving um, uh, the South and they're saving this mentality. Was this view true? No. There was, uh, black rule was so minor. There was a few ceiling um, breakers of the African American community, but it wasn't, they never held a majority and so relatively didn't get a lot done. The carpet beggars um, had a lot of intimidation against them. In the South, they were viewed um, by... Uh, uh, as some as um, as being like despicable, as being worse than butchers, um, as gangs. Uh, the carpet beggars, uh, and I quote: um, um, one Democrat called them gangs of interlopers, too deprived to desolate, dishonest, and de- uh, degraded. The scallywags were viewed with no less um, animosity. They were seen as unfit for butchers. They were vile. They were vindictive. They were they were seen to they needed to be slain. And this was um, what many people viewed um, uh, that is going on at the uh, during Reconstruction. There's this idea that you have to you could not support African Americans, and African Americans were overwhelming the odds against um, people. Uh, Carpet beggars and scalawags were often hated because of their alliance with African Americans. There was excessive racist response against them. Um, they would go out to. Uh, not only were they also seen as more educated in many ways than the fellow Southerners, and um, they wanted to have industry and education and progress in the South. So all of this is is seen as very anti old school lost cause. And so there was intimidation. There were people that were um, were executed. There were people that were beaten um, uh, for uh, carpet beggars and scalawags. And African Americans, it was no less. Um, uh, worse, uh, one man um, said he didn't speak to his friend because he was a carpet beggar, and he said he was a turncoat. and And I quote: "Any white man who'd go around with uh, an African American terrible expletive clubs is too low to speak to a gentleman." End quote. Um, and so you you had this idea of bringing down society is is viewed that the southern mentality and social settings were um were incorrect and wrong and so what ends up happening is you get the rise of the Ku Klux Klan the Ku Klux Klan actually um started um post um right after the Civil War, and it's founded by Nathan Bedford, For- Nathan Bedford Forrest, who was a Confederate general. Um, and he starts, he ends up leaving the KKK because it was seen as too vicious and too violent for him. So he ends up find- founding it. Um, it is viewed as often a religion, if you've ever watched any documentaries on the KKK. I mean, the cross burnings is seen to be a light um, for... Uh, it is supposed to be that you're you're starting you're setting fire to a cross to show the light to God. Um, it is heavily uh, um, uh, Christian in many ways. They have um, entire setups. They have their own religious books. It's um, it's 
for lack of a better word, interesting. Um, the, the few KKK members were ever convicted for any wrongs that happened during the reconstruction period. Um, they terrorized African Americans. They would do night rides in which they would get on a horse and, uh, ride through town and knock on doors and beat people up and had that constant fear later when uh, education was better, they would send outlets today. These night rides still happen um, with cars, not horses, um, in the South. Um, and like for an example, uh, in Mississippi, there was an entire um, family that was lynched outside of their home and they caught all five members of the KKK and the um, uh, all five members, sorry, sorry, the uh, family was convicted. Uh, five witnesses came forward saying that it was these people and all five witnesses to the crime were executed, um, before they testified. And in fact, that, uh, uh, they weren't, and they were never tried. Charges were brought against. And this was a very common, common mentality that happens. The violence gets so bad. Um, by 1871, Congress passes the amendment to force, uh, to enforce the 14th sorry, the act to enforce the 14th amendment, also known as the KKK act. And this w allowed the president to hire martial law to stop, to crack down on some of those violence. So in, um, 18, 1871, there is a downfall, uh, of the violence, but by 1872, most Democrats in the South, uh, or most people were democratic in the South, uh, until 1968. And this is, dangerous to it was dangerous to be republican in the south it was dangerous to be an african-american in the south um or a native american there was there was a lot of violence that was going on um and a lot of people supported the kkk um to this day there is still a support for a lot of the kkk with the alt-right movement um not all all right people are members of the kkk but there are um a large amount who are, um, and they're recruiting all the time. They, um, uh, they recruit, recruit not just in the South, but in the North. I'm from Idaho. And at one point there was a heavy Aryan, heavy KKK movement, uh, where I was at, they actually ended up getting ran out, which was fortunate. Um, Idaho is still known as, uh, is someone who houses the alt, um, the Aryans, which is kind of dis disturbing because when I was in junior high, they were already gone. Um, I'm sure there's still sleeper cells of them, but with some of the propaganda that is going on right now, um, it, they're coming to a new heights. Um, particularly, in, uh, we, we saw it with Charleston, with the March, um, you have people who are openly marching with, uh, not only the KKK, but also on, f uh, fascist, uh, party settings. Um, and so this should be a real concern in, uh, uh, this coming up, um, increasingly. Um, uh, as I said, um, oh, um, but by 1871, they had to do a crackdown. By 1872, however, they end up end, it's the end of the Freedmen's Bureau. Um, a lot of support for African Americans' rights are, are dwindling from 72 to the end of 77. And this is because there was a lot of corruption that is going on. There's corruption in, uh, Grant's administration, which actually there's a new book on Grant. Um, I haven't read it yet, but it's supposed to be um, pretty incredible about relooking at Grant as a president of not being as inferior as he was, um, as he's viewed. As a president, great general, generally viewed as not a very good president, but also as re-looking at the corruption that he really didn't know a lot about the corruption as it happened and tried to control what he didn't know. Um, it, so it, it was viewed as emancipation was really a tool. It, it wasn't an ideal that was in the South. And so ma emancipation was uh, was done primarily by Lincoln and by the North during the Civil War as a p to hurt the Confederacy. Um, it wasn't meant initially to liberate the slaves. And it, if it, remember, um, the United States at this time is intensely racist in the North and in the South. Um, and it was mainly viewed to hurt the economy of, of the South and also to, to hurt things um, uh, of not just the economy, but also the military and the people in general. And so a lot of, um, 
the great amendments occur as a result of not really necessarily wanting to change society, but really of as a punishment to another group. Um, and so I, th I think that's why you ha have increase of black laws. You have also um, the Mississippi plan um, that is instituted in 1875. And the Mississippi plan was to put economic and social pressure on um, anyone who voted Republican as well as uh, uh, which is the 15 to 17 percent of white mississippians who called them republicans and so they wanted them to remove to the democratic party so they orchestrated riots which occurred um where uh, republicans were gathered at political picnics and uh the democratic uh, rifle clubs would show up and invoke an incident and for example in this Vicksburg, Mississippi, um, riots killed 35 um, African Americans and two white people were killed. And those were kind of the usual statistics ratio of, um, of African American to white death um, in the South is that you have more, um, uh, more violence that are happening to the African American community, but it spooked a lot of um, whites to remove from the Republican camp to the Democratic camp. Um, an example of this is five of Mississippi's heaviest um, black counties by 1875 were polled of how many Republicans voted and 12 voted on one county, seven in one county, four in another, two in one, and zero in one. And one of that was because all of the Republicans were executed at the time. So this ends up of like what what is going on with reconstruction, how to um, deal with this. Also, on part of a, a part of the reconstruction is we have to talk about what is the replacement to plantations, and that is sharecropping. And sharecropping is when um, you're given you're allowed to work the land for a small percentage, and so a lot of old former plantation owners end up higher. Uh, hiring, for lack of better words, um, African Americans to work on that. They were given small plots, usually not very much to subsist off of, and so it's pretty much indentured servitude that uh, that um, occurs, and this was allowed. Um, black laws within Mississippi and Louisiana and stuff prohibited marriage or um, um, uh, even speaking to uh, some uh, a marriage between an African American and a white. Uh, a white person um, even prohibited people from speaking um, across uh, um, uh, across biracial uh, lines. Um, it, it was there was penalties for going into certain stores, and so what you end up getting eventually is the Jim Crow laws, and the Jim Crow laws um, that persist through the civil rights, where people can't walk on sidewalks or go into certain stores or use the same bathroom or the water fountains. Eventually, and this all is a result of Reconstruction, and this is all a result of the racism at the time, and this um, it, they missed the chance to really move beyond. Um, racial racial lines and actually do more civil rights but a lot of this as I said before was punishments punishments to the south um, so that is one of the reasons why you have the height of the KKK and why you have um, by 1874 Democrats are holding uh, the Congress so this uh, this idea of black rule and that everything was changing too much is um, really a fallacy um, and uh, and it was very effective for the Democrats to use this as the they've taken over the old school and we need to go against this this onslaught of people who are taking over so that is black rule in the KKK we will um, finish next lecture with um, the end of reconstruction as um, as well as the conclusion <laughs>